Welcome everybody to this introduction to LXPUP, which is a version of Puppy Linux with the LXDE desktop environment. This particular video has been made using LXPUP 1502, which is a flavour of LXPUP based on Slack 06. And Slack 06 uses Slackware 14.1 components. And this is running on the 3.17.7 PAE kernel. The significant user interface components of LXPUP are the Open Box Window Manager, the LX Panel X Panel Manager, and the PC Man File Manager. But it also relies on PUP Volume Monitor, which is a puppy-specific piece of software developed to handle removable devices. LX, all LXPUPs come with a selection of applications. This particular flavour has the Firefox web browser, Silfeed email manager, the Abbey Word word processor, numeric spreadsheet manager, and lots of other ones. As well as this PAE Slackware version of uh, LXPUP, there are other flavours available. There's a no PAE version with the 3494 kernel. There's a preci precise version with another no PAE 3248 kernel. There's a tar version with PAE, PAE and no PAE 3.14.20 kernels and there's a unicorn version with again the 3.17.7 PAE kernel. So to start this introduction we're first of all going to have a look at the menu. OK, so this is the LXPUP desktop as it comes out of the box. Uh, there's a uh, little icon here to show you which version of LXPUP you're running. And there's the wastebasket or trash can if you're in America. Uh, down on the panel there's a clock and a system tray with a volume control a firewall manager, a clipboard manager, uh, a network manager, a storage monitor and a processor monitor. So if we start off by looking at the menu, and the first item on the menu is the desktop menu. And this allows you to change all sorts of aspects of the desktop. We'll just have a look at the change appearance uh, section because this is unique to LXPUP. Uh, the first section has buttons for changing various aspects of the user interface. It also enables you to um, enable or disenable compositing. And then there's a further menu with various options that can be installed. You can install uh, an extra top panel. You can install additional right-click options. You can install drive icon icons on the desktop. You can install the Conkey system monitor. You can install the WBAR application launcher. And you can also install the LX launcher um, application launcher for netbooks. You can put a Wi-Fi strength monitor into the system tray. Uh, you can enable s floppy disk support and you can also download items and switch to different desktop environments if you've loaded the right components. The system menu has various aspects of controlling the system. And we'll just use this to show you a neat little trick 
with uh, LXDE, which is that if you right click on any item in the menu, then you can add it down to the launch bar on the panel and you can also add it to the desktop. So there we have the LX terminal um, item put on the desktop for future use. If we go into the setup menu, uh, this is where you can set up various aspects of the system. We'll particularly look at the Puppy Package Manager. This is where you can install uh, items of software and from the um, uh, Puppy repositories and also uninstall them again if you don't want to, to use them. As well as Puppy Package Manager, you can also install and uninstall uh, SFS um, collections of uh, applications. In this particular case, I'm running an NVIDIA SFS because that uh, improves my display. And I've also got a Chromium uh, SFS available, but I haven't loaded it yet. Okay, going down the list, we have the utility menu, various uh, items under the utility menu. We have the file system menu. And this is where we um, get to PC Man FM, which is the main file manager on the system. But we can also go to Rocks Filer, which is a more traditional uh, puppy file manager. And we also get on this menu to PFind, which is the uh, application for finding uh, files on your system. OK, going down the, the menu, we've got the graphics. Um, MT Paint is the main um, graphics editor on the system. Under Documents, we've got the Abbey Word word processor. Under Calculate, we've got the numer Numeric Spreadsheet Manager. Under Personal, we have various tools. Under Network, We've got um, Samba Search. Uh, in this particular case, this has found a, a search on my router for me. OK, so here's an example of uh, pup volume monitoring action, because when we unmount that search, you can see it disappears from the left-hand side of the um, file manager there. We'll look at the file manager a bit more in later. Uh, the internet, we've got Firefox and Silfeed. There's Firefox. Again, we'll look at that a bit later. Uh, under multimedia, we've got all sorts of things to do with uh, playing and burning CDs and DVDs and the bit of software I'm using to record this which is called uh, PAV Record that's what's uh, actually being used at the moment to capture this video in fun there's a, a very small selection of um, of games there's a help button that takes you off to a a help page uh, there's a list of recent documents there's a run command which allows you to type in a bit of a, a word and then 
and then run that particular application. It's quite a useful little thing. And then finally, there's the session control, which enables you to reboot the system, uh, to suspend the system if you're on a, a laptop, uh, to power it down, um, to go log out to the terminal, and to restart the window manager if you need to do that. So that's a quick look at the menu. Next thing we'll look at is the file manager PCMAN-FM. OK, next we'll have a look at the PCMAN file manager. Various ways to access it. There's a uh, an icon down on the launch bar down here. Uh, we've already seen where it is in the menu and we can also access it by clicking on the wastebasket icon. Anyway, we'll go in down here and here we are. It's a, um, uh, a file manager which um, can have dual panes. Um, this particular version is PCMAN FM123. Uh, it has all the devices on the system on this left hand panel here. And if I plug in a USB stick, you'll say that they've appeared here. Um, and we can click on them to open them up and we can unmount them again and then if we remove the stick they disappear again okay we can put bookmarks here so I've got bookmarks here um, to my home page on the disk but I've also got one to a remote FTP um, site. So that's a, um, a connection now across the internet to an FTP site. Um, and when I finish using it I can demount that again. Uh, you can also get through the to the applications through PC Man FM. So some of the things we were looking at before, like the Samba search, that's all there under applications. We've got a rubbish bin, which has just got one item in it at the moment, which we can empty if we want to. And uh, all in all, it's quite a nice file manager um, with quite a lot of different uh, aspects to it. Now at the moment we've got um, we've got no extra right click um, options enabled here. Um, we'll enable some more later on and show you how to use those. Okay, next we'll have a quick look at the panel. Um, We've already seen the uh, system tray. We've already seen the the launch bar. Uh, we'll now look at actually configuring the panel itself. First thing you may have noticed is that this panel has auto uh, hide, but it only hides when something else is covering it. So that's quite a nice feature. The panel is always there if there's nothing covering it, but if anything covers it, then it auto hides. If we look at the panel settings, um, that's the go below when not in use setting. That's that one there, the visibility setting. Uh, various things we can do. In this particular case, uh, we have it. We've got a um, a transparent uh, panel, 
and here are all the things that are on the panel the menu the launch bar uh, the minimize windows button the desktop pager down here um, the CPU user usage monitor the system tray and the digital clock um, so that's uh, those are the sorts of things you can change on the on the panel and for instance if you want to put extra things in the application launch bar uh, we've already seen one way of doing it which is right clicking on the menu item but we can actually edit the um, the launch bar as we can see we've got here are the three things we've currently got on it uh, we can remove them if we want to we can move them up and down and we can add applications uh, from the menu so that's a quick look at the LX Panel X Panel Manager OK, next uh, thing we'll have a quick look at is the web browser. Uh, as I said, on this particular flavour of LXPUP, the, the built-in web browser is Firefox. And we can get to it via the menu, or we can get to it by clicking the icon on the desktop, or we can get to it by this launch button. And you can see how quickly it uh, it, it uh, starts up um, again if we click on here we go off to some LXPUP support pages on the internet um, here we've got uh, downloads of various flavours um, other add-ons like Chromium like Skype um, bits of eye candy and how to get support on LXPUP. So this particular version of uh, Firefox is the um, 24.6 extended support release version. So it's, um, it's a pretty stable version but not necessarily the absolute up-to-date one but you can always install other web browsers uh, as you wish. OK, to wind up this uh, introduction to LXPOP, I'm going to show you how to install one of the options. In this particular case, we're going to install the extra right-click options. This is implemented as an inbuilt PET, which has to be installed. The installation process includes resetting the panel and updating the menu. And that's what's happening at the moment. Once that's finished, we now have new right-click options. So, for instance, if we look at an ISO file, well, let's let's look at the um, the ISO for the system that we're running, which is this one here, LXPUP fifteen o two. PAE. OK. If we right click, we now have a whole set of new right click options. For instance, we can generate the MD5 checksum for that particular ISO file. While we're here, we'll just have a look inside the ISO. To ins look inside the ISO, we just click on it. And there we are, that's what the contents of the ISO are. And when you want to do a frugal install of any puppy,
but in particular of LXPOP, there are four files that you're copying. The initrd, the VM Linux, the puppy LXPUP SFS file, and the Z drive, Z drive LXPUP SFS file. So those are the four things that get copied across into the frugal install. For instance, in this particular case, here's my frugal install. A bit messy, but you can see the initrd, the VM Linux, the puppy LXPUP and the Z drive. OK, that's the end of this uh, introduction to LXPUP. And I hope I've shown you some of the things that make LXPUP a unique operating system. I hope I've also shown you the speed at which it works. And um, I hope you go ahead and download it and enjoy it. Thank you for watching.